I am Paula Summers and I'm going to go over how to study for um, the fifth exam in MAC 2233. It's on chapter four about integration. So first off, just simple integration here, simple integration problem. How do we integrate sum and difference? You can break this up into the integration of each term. Just take it term by term. And what we have here is that when you integrate a constant times a base to a power, you can bring the constant in the front of the integral sign and I'll just go ahead and write this out for all of these that have a constant multiplier. I'm going to move that to the front of the integration sign. And when you just have a constant, if you integrate a constant dt, it's just that constant times t. And when we do an um, integration problem, if, it, if we don't have a lower and upper limit, we always put plus c because it's an indefinite integral. So whenever you integrate a variable to a power, you just take the variable and add one to the power and put that over the power plus one. And the seven multipliers just in front. So the integral of t to a power is t to the power plus one over the power plus one plus seven. So t is to the first power. So to integrate t to the first power, you just say t to the 1 plus 1, and then you put this over 1 plus 1. And then on, how do we, oh, we already integrated, and we got minus t plus c. We already integrated 2 and got 2t. Two so th the function we're looking for is 7 thirds t cubed. So that's over here. 7 thirds t cubed plus 7 halves, because 7 is over 1, and if we look at the number part of the second term, there's 7 halves a t squared, 7 halves t squared, and then minus 2t plus c. So that's letter B. So letter B is the first answer. On problem number two, this problem, if we rewrote it as 136x to the negative 1, we would not be able to use the power rule on this. We can only use the power rule when the power is a number that's not negative 1. So otherwise, when we integrate 1 over x dx, that's one of the integration rules that that's always natural log absolute value of x, and then we put a plus c. So on this one, if we just bring the 136 to the front, and we get 136 in front of the integral sign, then we will just have 1 over x dx left. And the integral of 1 over x dx, like we said, is just natural log absolute value of x. So the 136 is in front of this, and then we just tag on the plus c. So that's why the correct answer is going to be letter A. The third problem on this practice exam is how do we integrate 24x squared? And the answer is we rewrite this as the integral of 24x to the negative 2 dx, and then we just use the power rule. So the power rule just states, after I bring the 24 to the front of this, that the integral of x to any power is just going to be x to that power plus 1 on top of the power plus 1. And then we tag on plus c. So in this case, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And we have a negative 1 on the bottom. So in the end, we have a negative 24. And then x to the negative 1 needs to move down and become x to the positive 1 plus c. So the answer we're looking for is minus 24 over x plus c, and that's answer letter B. On the fourth problem, we have the integral of 
8x to the 1 3rd. So this is another one that we just bring the 8 in front of the integral and we have an x to a power that we are integrating. So when you integrate x to a power, you just say that the answer is x to the power plus 1 on top of the power plus 1. That's the rule, plus c. So 1 3rd plus 3 thirds is 4 thirds. So this power is a 4 thirds power. And instead of dividing by 1 third plus 1, instead of dividing by 4 thirds, we should just um, multiply by 3 fourths. So instead of dividing by 4 thirds, we'll multiply 3 fourths. And then what we find here is that if you have a number times a variable part times another number, just multiply 8 times 3 fourths. And you could cancel, use canceling if you want, and get 2 times 3, 6x to the 4 thirds power, and then we have a plus c. 6x to the 4 thirds power plus c is letter choice D. On the next page, we have problem number 5. And on problem number 5, we have an integral of two terms. And so we're just going to do this term by term. So we're going to separate this and do x to the 4 dx plus the integral e to the 2x dx. So on x to the 4, the integral is just x to the 4 plus 1 on top of 4 plus 1 using power rule. On e to the 2x, the rule states that if you integrate an e to some function of x, you need the derivative of that function of x present to be able to say that the integral is e to the u. So this is e to the 2x. So our u is 2x, so our du dx is 2. The derivative of 2x with respect to x is 2. So if we just move the dx, multiply dx on both sides, we find that du is 2 dx. So on our e to the 2x dx, we need a, um, a 2 dx to be able to say that this is set up as an e to the u du. So in order to have a du, du is 2 dx, so I'm missing a 2. I need a 2. If all you're missing is a number multiplier, constant multiplier, you can fill it in as long as you compensate with its inverse multiplied on the outside. So we have a 1 half outside of this integral, which is set up as an e to the u du integral. And so on our first term, we have x to the fifth over 5, or we can say 1 fifth x to the fifth, plus we have a 1 half in front of this e to the u du, which has an integration of e to the u. And then we put plus c. Now, we, we know that u equals 2x, so we don't, none of the answers have u involved. It, they're all in terms of x. So we're really looking for 1 fifth x to the fifth plus 1 half e to the 2x. Instead of to the u power, we want to fill in the 2x plus c. So that is answer choice D. x to the fifth over 5 plus 1 half e to the 2x is the same as e to the 2x over 2 and then plus c. So our answer is D. On number 6, um, I'm going to go on to a, uh, I'm going, for problem number 6, I'm going to start a fresh video.